14 days we have been trending down from our high at $72,000 roughly to the low that we've just punched in at the low $63,000 price range and in 14 days we have seen the market completely lose its mind which is normal and absolutely shit itself and to me this is absolutely fantastic i'm going to be telling you why in this youtube video bitcoin has failed finding support in that 64 65 thousand dollar price range we've continued to slide lower and i think that there could be some more blood to come but what i also want you guys to be very very consciously aware of is that it is not super common that bitcoin maintains a particular direction for 14 days straight you know i do want to put this into perspective for you guys if we just take this trusty ruler and see how long bitcoin has trended up for for example over here uh bitcoin from this point here up to the high did not trend for this long against our ruler if we take the same trusty ruler and move it to this downtrend bitcoin from the beginning of this downtrend to where it bottomed out did not trend for as long as this ruler. We can do this absolutely anywhere, ladies and gents. And to this low that Bitcoin punched in right here, Bitcoin did not trend for as long as our ruler. Which is telling us that we have been for a sustained period of time now trending in the downward direction. And a lot of people have been losing their minds over this. But you've got four flies coming at you guys with another video your boy sammy loyal just highlighting the facts ladies and gents because that's where i live in i live in reality i live with these facts that's why i like to keep around me bitcoin last year entered a phenomenal uptrend traded sideways inside of roughly a 20 percent range right now we're in an uptrend we're trading sideways guess what in roughly a 20 percent range and after that it exploded higher we didn't break market structure at any point over here we have not broken market structure at any point and if you do take a look at the lows that bitcoin set let's go ahead and look here friday 18th of august you know we can remember if we were in this market just not even a year ago uh, that bitcoin was a very very scary place to be for a lot of people at this particular point in the market uh, but of course if you were watching this youtube channel uh, you're gonna know that i was saying then the exact same thing i'm saying now which is that the market at no point has it broken any of its market structure and for that reason i'm not able to make myself start getting bearish here and that's how i feel about the market right now we have seen the fear and greed index kind of pull back just a little bit to a reading of 63 yesterday was a reading of 60 today it might be back down to 60 perhaps even a touch lower uh, but it's been relatively stable for these last three months if we take a look at this on a larger time frame obviously we have now gone from you know quite fearful areas to uh, slightly more neutral and bullish places here uh, but i do still think that we have uh, you know I, I don't think that this is a super accurate gauge right now i do still think that we have a lot of people very very upset and if you appreciate that little ruler uh, you know to just show you where we are in terms of time i'm going to expand on that in just a second do me a favor and smash up the likes on this youtube video as you are coming in ladies and gents i do appreciate all the support and of course with the links that you have available to you all uh, in the description below especially that blowfin link you're going to be seeing some phenomenal bonuses blowfin is a no kyc exchange uh, obviously there aren't very many out there anymore and a lot of the ones that are out there uh, are not places that you'd probably want to trade on uh blowfin is a uh, is an exchange that has its own technology uh you know they're not white labeled which is very important they're not borrowing somebody else's tech uh, and they are looking pretty damn solid right now you're going to be getting thousands of dollars in bonuses uh when you sign up using my link below uh, so definitely go ahead and check that out uh, if you do want to trade bitcoin uh, and you want to retain your privacy uh, so it's super super cool offer there bybit also phenomenal offer you get a card if you're in europe so that's cool i've actually been using their card all around the world started off using it in singapore used it everywhere it is fucking cool it's a visa card or a mastercard i can't remember but very very cool accepted everywhere uh and worth checking out but let's come back to the market here we'll talk about those in just a little bit 
And we do have this zone of support, uh, you know, which I've had outlined for a long time. This is, of course, the initial reaction zone that Bitcoin encountered in late February when we first got up to this level earlier this year. And it's been a nice bounce and resistance zone for the market since then as well. Now, is it the strongest area? No, I don't think so. I don't think it's the strongest area on this chart, but it's still an area that I would pay attention to. And that's what I'm talking to you guys about it. However, I do think that, you know, look, if we've already lost this zone here in the 66, 67 K range, we might have to be dropping a little bit lower. You know, I've always known that this is kind of just an interim support level. Uh, you know, it did give Bitcoin a little bounce here, but clearly, you know, it's not been the most important bounce so far. Uh, but I do think that the more important bounce levels are going to be down in the very, very low uh, part of the $60,000 price range. And basically just that, you know, just at about $60,000, um, you know, is where I might have to expect that support to come in. And of course, we do have a lot of tolerance for liquidity grabs here. Uh, obviously, a lot of people are going to be, you know, potentially putting their long orders in over here. Uh, but that could mean that a lot of stop losses are going to be down here, right? So a lot of the time when you get these bounces, the price is going to get that bounce, but you're first going to see a very, very quick flash down here grab that liquidity and then you're back to business and speaking of being back to business the only way that this chart can start looking to me it looks bullish and you know why it's because we're in an uptrend we have a broken market structure but the only way this chart can start looking very very exciting to me again is if we get back above 66 67 thousand dollars now this has been a formidable zone on this chart both as resistance but also super reliable as support over here uh and so if we are able to get back above it and by the way i would like to just point out you know just in case you haven't really been paying attention uh you know we have already hit this zone as resistance four times now uh you know four times we've gotten rejected here take a look at that right here this one this last one you might not count it but i count it i think it counts it's still in the same range uh you know where we've kind of spiked up and then been sent back down so this has already been a problematic zone for the market but of course now if we take a little bit more time to get back up here uh you know we might have a better chance at breaking it or we might have a better chance at much heavier resistance so that's going to depend on which bias you have uh you know personally i don't really know which bias i have at the moment i think that if we fall down to 60k and then come back up here there is you know a good argument to say that it's going to be bearish and we're going to drop uh but at the same time if you look at this in terms of you know you got the bottom of the range here the top of the range here well then you're just going to keep doing this which is what we've already been doing and you'd probably expect that we get back to the top of the range and however we get there if we do i think all of us would agree that eventually we're going to get back above 67k uh eventually if and when it happens I think we're straight back to being bullish, obviously. Uh, you know, this is going to be huge. Uh, and I don't expect that this resistance level is going to be able to hold Bitcoin back. So to me, that's one of the more exciting propositions in the market. I do still think that because we're trending down and because the 63, 64K area hasn't produced a big bounce, we might have to find support a little bit lower. Uh, and in terms of what that looks like, let me just go ahead. Let's, let's take a brand new chart where I don't really have any drawings because this one is starting to get a little bit claustrophobic a little bit cluttered uh and we're just we're just going to go ahead and reset this chart we don't need this chart anymore and i want to show you what some of my key indicators are saying some of the indicators that i know and love that i've been using with you guys for a very very long time smash up the likes for the ichimoku cloud ladies and gents uh we do have resistance up ahead if we end up seeing that 66 67k zone again which is something that we were just brushing on um if we look at this on the daily however we are in a nice big ichimoku cloud we've successfully used the cloud twice now we had a very nice bounce off the very bottom of the range over here we had a nice bounce off very close to the top of the range here we got above it and then we bounced off this cloud again so we are in the support now it stretches all the way down to 56 57 thousand dollars uh, you know maybe by the time we get there if we do get there it's going to be looking a little bit more like 58 and this red line is actually pretty useful on the ichimoku cloud so that's something i'm going to be watching out for it's worth noting that according to this particular time frame according to this particular uh, indicator um, you know, our support has just started, you know, and and again, I think that it makes so much sense because sentiment has gotten so fucking bitter, right? And a lot of the reason, you know, let's just acknowledge the elephant in the room here, ladies and gents. A lot of the reason that we've seen sentiment sour so much in this market is because 
of meme coins. It's because of exhaustion in the altcoin market. I've got a phenomenal chart to prove this to you. If we look at total, which is the crypto total market cap, we can see a relatively healthy picture here and also a picture that looks pretty damn near identical to Bitcoin's chart. Now, if we take a look at total two, this is the market cap excluding Bitcoin. So that's everything apart from Bitcoin. We've got pretty much the same chart here slightly less healthy chart it's not actually maintaining such a higher high again this is bitcoin here we're maintaining a nice high look very very carefully and watch how it drops uh, on total two and you will see how we are slightly lower here uh than total three so that's including ethereum but now let's let's exclude bitcoin and let's exclude ethereum let's just look at the altcoins and look at how low we are here. This is a very, very noticeable change. Basically, by the looks of it from here, pretty much all of the carnage, pretty much all of the sadness that this market is experiencing right now is a result of altcoins, okay? Money is leaving altcoins. And there is a big discussion to be had here about why, but primarily, you know, and, and it really just boils down to this. You might not like it, you might not agree with it. It ain't going to change the truth. The reason that people are selling their altcoins is because that, uh, how do I say that, uh, that, that, that illusion that these coins are going to make the money is, is fading. Okay. The veil is being lifted from people's eyes and they are seeing these coins for what they are. Okay. You got a bunch of traders in the club. The girls in the club are these shit coins. As soon as you start sobering up from those drinks, you're starting to see them for the fat whales that they usually that they actually are, and you're not interested anymore. Okay, and that starts, and that is always the problem that these altcoins experience. But don't be mistaken, ladies and gents, it's the same problem that Bitcoin experiences too, because people trade Bitcoin the same way that they trade altcoins. It's just a little bit better. Okay. So when we think of it from that particular perspective, it is overwhelmingly clear that when things start getting a little bit bad, they're going to get very bad for altcoins. And it's because nobody buys them for any reason other than to dump them on the next idiot. With Bitcoin, it's slightly better, but it's still the same thing. And that's why you see these really, really big crashes. And obviously, I think another big part of this, which again, we're addressing the uh, the, the, the whale in the club in this case. The other thing that we've got to acknowledge is that the mania in the altcoin market, in the meme coin market over these last weeks, the excitement, the FOMO, the whatever the hell it's, it has been, whatever it is, has been enormous, okay? It's been such a strong force on the market in these recent weeks and months that it just looks like it might be coming to a bit of exhaustion here. It's not me telling you, you have a chart in front of you uh, showing you the same thing, okay? If you look at this chart, and by the way, there are times where the um, where the market cap chart looks very bullish without Bitcoin, right? I mean, you know, the peak here coming in, uh, you know, if we if we look at total three, for example, if we look at the peak here, where does it peak? Let's zoom out, wait for this to load. And we see the absolute all time high right here on the 10th of November. Now let's look at Bitcoin, Bitcoin itself. Yeah. And let's zoom out on this chart. And look at where Bitcoin peaked for the very same market cycle. And it peaks, oh, my bad, right, right around there, actually. Right around there. Uh, but we probably saw, hang on, let me backpedal this real quick. Let me, let, me just, let me just make sure I know what I'm talking about here because we're in this recording together, ladies and gents. Yeah, so actually they do peak at the same time. The altcoin market peaks one day later. I don't want to say that proves my point. Um, but... We do know that we see altcoin seasons after that. I think a good representation of that is just the way that this goes up and up and up. And also how high that next all-time high is, 15% above the previous all-time high. This is a very good representation of what I was talking about, where the altcoins peaked here at a uh, slightly under $1 trillion market cap. Up here, they peak at a $1.13 trillion market cap. So significantly higher uh, than its previous all-time high, at least compared to Bitcoin. Uh, because if we do take this back to the Bitcoin chart here, um, let's look at that right here. 
we can see that the difference between these all-time highs was not 14%, it was 6%, okay? Very, very clearly showing us uh, that altcoins do have their fun, uh, but it is actually in the later stages of the bull market. And this is something that we've been talking about for a very, very long time. We've continued, of course, to see Bitcoin's dominance uh, you know, gain ground. Uh, and right now it is consolidating very nicely up at these highs. Now, one of the things that you and I know about consolidation at highs is that that's usually what comes directly before the breakout. Smash up the likes, ladies and gents. If you remember me talking about this on this YouTube channel all the fucking time, <laughs> let me know in the live chat. I'm sorry, in the comments, because we're not live today, in the comment section down below, if you remember me talking about this all the time in the market, because I remember it. I remember it very, very well. It's one of the most common things that I tell you guys about in the market. And I was saying it a lot back here. Just go back and find my YouTube videos in June, May of 2023. And you will hear me singing this song from the rooftops in every damn video. Uh, you know, when we are at resistance and we get quick, sharp, big rejections like this. Yeah, that's a valid hit. But when you get up to resistance and you just kind of chill at the top you know you just you just kind of light one up and just sit up there and watch the view that's a sign that you're actually going to be breaking out okay uh you know it doesn't have to go like that all the time but it's very very typical okay and and i think that's really really important and we saw the same thing happening the next time here right we entered another range and we got nice big quick sharp rejections but the last couple of times we just consolidated all right we just consolidated and that was what preceded the breakout well look at what's happening again right here ladies and gents you can't make this up big quick sharp rejections and right now uh bitcoin has been able to sustain itself sideways for a little bit of time so if we're looking for characteristics to tell us that this is still looking very strong and it's still looking like it's going to gain ground then i think we're seeing them right now Am I reading too deep into this and this is too short of a time frame to make such conclusions? Maybe, but maybe this was too short as well and it definitely worked out anyway, right? So I think that, yeah, I mean, I could be stretching things a little bit. It could be too short to start drawing those kind of conclusions, but at the same time, I think it's still valid. You know, I think it's still valid. I think it still proves the point. Uh, and I think what it shows us is that we've gained a little bit of ground with Bitcoin's dominance, but it's going sideways now, right? So that's, again, just consolidation. So I think that's really important uh, as a lens to be viewing this market, because I think that's where a lot of the sadness is coming in from with this market. We do have a serious problem, and it's the S&P 500. I've actually got a dedicated video uh, for you guys to do with Bitcoin and the S&P 500. So if you want to see that tomorrow, let me know in the live, I'm sorry, in the comment section today uh, by writing S&P 500 video. Uh, and I'd be super happy to give you guys that. Uh, but what we do have on the S&P 500 is a very clear uptrend where the S&P has continued to set brand new all-time highs very much regularly here. It does have a few gaps. And if you're one of the people that likes the idea of gaps being filled, then there are a good few gaps beneath us to be filled here. Uh, but I mean, I think that this is important um, because if, and we are starting to see it right now, if the S&P 500 pulls back by just a little bit, it does mean carnage for Bitcoin. Uh, but unfortunately, if the S&P 500 trends up, it doesn't mean happiness for Bitcoin. Um, you know, at least recently, you know, Bitcoin typically does generally move in the direction of the S&P 500 and generalizations do not make you smart if you can point out exceptions. OK, if you can point out exceptions, that doesn't mean you're smart. I'm talking about generalizations. So let's let's clear that up. I know that there's some smart motherfucker thinking that, you know, he's he's above everybody for seeing that right now. It's not the case. That's obvious, sir. We see that. We all see that. Uh, we're not talking about that. We're talking about generally typical, usual situations. Bitcoin follows the S&P 500. But the problem is when that stops happening, Bitcoin still follows the S&P 500 when it's dropping a lot of the time. Uh, but it might not follow the S&P 500 when it's rallying up. And that is, of course, a potentially very scary situation for people 
holding Bitcoin. So I think that's worth keeping in mind. If the S&P 500 does start pulling back, uh, there could be some trouble. Now, you might not worry about that too much looking at the dollar. The dollar is at a macro zone of resistance and we have not been able to break above this zone of resistance since the first attempt of it being resistance in December of 2022. So that is two and a half, one and a half years ago, something like that. I don't know, a long time ago. And, uh, you know, we, we have gotten small fake outs above this zone, but, you know, nothing that really sustained itself, uh, you know, and, and, and of course, we're not really looking at the dollar in terms of, you know, normal TA like we usually do. But in this case, I think it could be, you know, on the verge of appropriate. Uh, if it does get a big boom up here, then that could definitely spell some disaster for the S&P 500. Although recently, even that inverse correlation hasn't been sustained. So, you know, whether you think that's going to come back. Uh, or not is up to you. I think it will come back. I think if you see a big macro price move for the dollar here, uh, you know, you're probably going to see some, uh, you know, bearish environments for the S&P 500. That's just how I feel. Of course, I might be wrong. It's not like I hold all the answers, maybe just most of them, or maybe none of them. <laughs> but, um, you know, I think that's worth keeping in mind. Uh, but of course, as I always say, resistance is resistance and support is support. Uh, and the dollar is now at macro resistance. And equally, I think uh, even more than that, actually, I think that now that the dollar is at macro resistance, there could be a setup here uh, for the dollar to start dropping down a little bit. Uh, and that would obviously be quite problematic uh, for the for the dollar itself, but very, very good for the S&P 500 and potentially for Bitcoin. I actually think that Bitcoin is still maintaining a very clear inverse correlation against the dollar and let me just see if I can prove that to you right now on video, um, because I'm curious to see some evidence uh, to back that up as well. Let's just see if I can move Bitcoin a little bit higher. And yeah, definitely recently uh, we have been seeing that strength in the dollar, which basically came in right around over here, uh, has correlated inversely with Bitcoin's performance. Uh, Bitcoin, as soon as the dollar started to gain strength, has started to shit itself. Uh, let's see if we can trace this back even further. So Bitcoin bottoms here and the dollar is dropping. OK, so when the dollar is dropping, Bitcoin is strong. Uh, when Bitcoin, you know, starts to uh, when, when the dollar starts rising, Bitcoin starts to drop. So that's very, very clear. We've seen that. And, and this is exactly what we knew, right? We, we knew this. We expected it very, very, very clear. I mean, you know, here's another beautiful example. Dollar starts trending down. Uh, Bitcoin peaks right when the dollar bottoms out. I mean, it's right in front of you. Uh, you know, <laughs> there's always going to be people that want to argue this, but it's right here, you know. And so if the dollar, um, you know, is looking at macro resistance right now, well, that could represent a major turning point for Bitcoin, uh, you know, and it could actually be exactly what Bitcoin needs now to start dropping. I'm um, sorry, to start rising up very, very hard. I honestly and I've said this a couple of times, but I really want to make this point super clear, especially to those of you that are above 20 minutes through this video. Thank you for the support. Thank you for watching these videos toward the end. I honestly think that Bitcoin's fate right now, as it stands at this present moment in, you know, end of June 2024, I think, and it's been like this for a while, I think that Bitcoin's um, health and its performance depends pretty much entirely on the dollar. And I've said that for a very long time, uh, and, and I still believe that to be the case. There are obvious exceptions. You know, the dollar has been very stable over the last two years and Bitcoin hasn't. So there are obvious exceptions. And again, you're not smart for pointing them out. Uh, but what's very, very clear is that Bitcoin does perform better when the dollar is weak uh, and Bitcoin does perform worse when the dollar is strong. So, you know, you're going to make your own decisions. That's almost more of a political discussion as well. So I don't really want to get involved in that stuff. But if you do think that the dollar might continue to weaken overall, uh, that could spell some bullish price action for Bitcoin to come as well. Ethereum against Bitcoin is doing very well. Look at this move up here. I mean, you know, it bottomed out somewhere around 0.51 BTC per token, now up to 0.55 BTC per token. Definitely looking good. Definitely looking identical to all of these dead cat bounces. So for me, uh, I can't get excited about any of this. This is still just, you know, a liquidity grab up here, a liquidity grab down here. 
and Ethereum ranging sideways inside of, might I remind you, a very, very nasty bear trend, okay? So um, it's good. It's very, very good performance on the ultra short term, but it has to do something much more impressive than this. It honestly, it has to get above 0 0.6 BTC per token in order for me to start thinking that actually Ethereum even has a chance at recovering against Bitcoin. Uh, and, and to be honest, it would have a good chance above that level, but I don't think that we're anywhere near there yet. So I'm just not going to be getting excited about that yet. But there you go, ladies and gents. I hope you have enjoyed this video. I need to get going for this one. There are a few more things I wanted to cover with you, but unfortunately, I don't have the time for that. If you did enjoy this one, do me a favor and smash up those likes. And of course, check out the link to Blowfin below in the description. Again, they are a no KYC exchange. They're not going to ask you for a picture of yourself or your ID. There are very, very few options. Uh, that are actually legitimate these days, uh, but this is definitely one of them. And as usual, be mindful of your local regulations. If you can't trade on any of these exchanges, then don't. You have to follow the law. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this one. You know exactly what to do. Subscribe so you don't miss out on the next bit of time-sensitive content. And I'll see you all in the next one. Cheers.